Howdy folks, and welcome back to the patch 9.3 test server with the mighty New Engels. We finally reached tier 8 in the American light tank line, and there it is, the T-49. I know this is one of the tanks that a lot of you have going to be waiting for. For me, it was the M41 Walker Bulldog, but there's just something about a KV-2 that can drive at 72 kilometers per hour, <laughs> which is what this little thing is that seems to have captured everybody's imagination. So, the first thing that we're going to do, and I haven't forgotten about the Chinese this time, is have a look at the other four Tier 8 light tanks. The T-54 Lightweight, the WZ-132, the AMX-1390, and the Spey Panzer RU-251. And just see what it is about this thing that is special compared to the other Tier 8 lights. So, alright, looking at the raw numbers, comparing the T-49 to the other tier 8 light tanks in the game, the Spa Panzer, sorry, the Spey Panzer, sorry Germany, I'll get it right, the AMX 1390, the T-54 Lightweight, and the WZ-132, see I remembered the Chinese this time, <laughs> um, you know, it, just looking at the raw numbers, there's absolutely nothing special about the T-49, it's the fastest, that's it, that's the, that's the only category in which it's better than any of the other tier 8 light tanks, 72.4 kilometers per hour, its hit points of 1100, well it's either 100 less or 50 more than all of the others, it's right in the middle. Weight, power to weight ratio is good, it's got a good power to weight ratio, 23.68, but it's not the best. The traverse speed is not special, 44 degrees per second. It's better than the AMX 1390, it's the same as the Spey Panzer, but it's worse than the T-54 Lightweight, and it's worse than the WZ-132. The armour is terrible. Uh, it's as bad as the Spey Panzer. It's not even as good as the AMX 1390, and nobody was ever going to accuse the AMX 1390 of being a well-armoured tank. The turret traverse is slow compared to the others. It's even slower than the AMX 1390. Uh, the same as on the Spey Panzer, nowhere near as fast as on the WZ-132 or the T-54 Lightweight. The view range is 400 meters. None of the others have better than 400 meters, but there's only one of them has less than 400 meters, the T-54 lightweight. The signal range is as good or worse than all of the others. In fact, it's joint last in signal range with the Spey Panzer. Compared to the other tier 8 light tanks, there is absolutely nothing special other than the raw top speed of the T-49. But that's kind of missing the point. You see, the thing about the T-49 People do not want to drive the T-49 because it can do 72.4 kilometers per hour. They don't want to drive it because it's very maneuverable. They don't want to drive it because it's cute. They want to drive it because it's got a 152 millimeter howitzer. Ah, suddenly it all becomes clear. And that is literally the only real outstanding feature about this tank. In all other respects, other than the top speed, there is absolutely nothing about this tank to set it apart from the other tier 8 lights. But that 152mm gun is one hell of a compelling argument. It'll do 910 average damage. <laughs> Look at this. Um, in real life, for the people who were saying, hang on a minute, that's not a T-49, that's an M551 Sheridan. Yeah, you're almost right. That second turret, uh, the first turret, by the way, looks like, I uh, can't show you it because it's an incompatible gun. Here we go. The first turret looks like that. It, it actually looks like an M41. Um, the second turret was the XM551 testbed turret. So it, th this is actually a Sheridan turret, and that's why people are thinking that this is actually an M551 Sheridan. It shares the same turret, basically. So, this 152mm gun, and it's not the only gun available on the tank, but it's probably the only gun that anybody's going to be using. 2.61 rounds per minute. <laughs> it's a terrible rate of fire. Depending on the equipment you're using, you can get the rate of fire down to around 19 seconds. But this thing is, it's, you're going to have to learn how to deal with a slow reload. The penetration, the ammunition choices with this gun are interesting. It has two different kinds of high explosive and one high explosive anti-tank, and the high explosive anti-tank isn't the premium ammunition. The second high explosive is the premium ammunition. This tank actually gets heat ammo for credits. 
in the same way that the M41 Walker Bulldog got a PCR ammunition for credits. Uh, we'll look at that in a moment, but the raw numbers are 76 millimeters of penetration with credit high explosives for 910 average damage, if it penetrates, 152 millimeters of penetration with high explosive anti-tank ammo for credits with 700 average damage, and 85 millimeters of penetration with a premium high explosive ammunition, again for 910 average damage. Now you might be thinking, well hang on a minute, why am I paying gold or lots and lots of credits for premium high explosive ammunition that only has nine millimeters more penetration than the standard ammunition well that's because the premium stuff has a five meter burst radius whereas the regular stuff only has a 3.6 meter burst radius if you watch my m41 walker bulldog replay from yesterday t49 drove right up to my m41 derped me in the face with this 152mm howitzer, hit my gun, knocked my gun out, and did about 50 damage to my tank. <laughs> my tank that has 25mm of armour. He was probably using the credit bought ammunition, so that the blast from the edge of my gun barrel only just reached the tank and did minimal damage. If he'd been using the premium high explosive ammunition, he would have probably wrecked the tank, because the hull of the tank would have then been included in the blast radius. So. That's what the premium ammunition is useful for on this thing. The accuracy, however, oh lordy lordy, <laughs> 0.6. That's artillery levels of accuracy, and the aiming time is ridiculous, 3.6 seconds. But that's not going to stop anybody from using it, because it's still 910 average damage in a tank. That can do 72 kilometers per hour and that's why people are going to be driving the t49 not because it's a good tank i mean it's not a bad tank but it's not a great tank but it's got a 152 millimeter howitzer there is another gun which nobody's going to use um it's a 90 millimeter it's basically the big brother of the 76 millimeter gun on the walker bulldog and the t71 well not so much the t71 there it is 90 millimeter t132e3 rate of fire yeah, not bad. 9.52 rounds per minute. Penetration, 102. Terrible. Um, average damage, 320. That's not bad. That's, you know, that's Russian. Actually, the DPM on this tank, is, if it penetrates with every shot it fires, which it's not going to do with 102 millimeters of penetration, the, the DPM is comparable to tier 10 Russian medium tanks. Great rate of fire on their 100mm guns and 320 average damage, but 102mm of penetration. 250 if it's firing heat, um, but the heat ammo only does 240 damage. So this gun is... Uh, who in their right mind is going to be using that gun? Well, I've seen people using that gun. I have no idea why. Um, and they've died because of it. I mean, the ammo choices are just absurd. 102 millimeters of penetration for 320 damage or 250 millimeters of penetration so you know you can actually hurt stuff but you're only doing 240 damage that's no and it's not that much i mean it's way better than 0.6 accuracy but 0.38 is still pretty bad accuracy 2.3 second aiming time not great but nothing fantastic this is just not a very very good gun at all so nobody's going to be using it or if they are they're idiots everybody's going to be using the howitzer because it's fun. Well, I say nobody's going to be using the 90mm, other than people who are grinding for the 152mm. Um, you know, they're not idiots, they just haven't unlocked the 152mm gun yet. Speaking of which, let's have a look at what it takes. Um, well, you've got one set of tracks, one engine, one radio, one turret, and then the gun. The engine is not shared with... Oh no, you should already have the engine from unlocking the Walker Bulldog. Uh, so there's that. It's also shared on the T69. So the engine should already be unlocked. The top radio. Um, yeah, there are other tanks that use it. Again, the Walker Bulldog. So the engine and the radio you should already have. You'll have to unlock the turret. You'll have to unlock the tracks. The tracks, 15,000 XP. The turret, 18,500 XP. The big gun, not that bad actually. 18,900 XP. It's not like when you get onto, well, tanks like the T54E1, where if you want to go for the 100mm go on that, it's 43,000 experience. So, not too bad. 
And also, of course, the T49 leads to the T5041 and then the T57 Heavy. The tech tree, I'll show you where it sits in the tech tree. Uh, there it is, T49. So from the M5 Stewart, you go to the Chaffee or the M7. Two different ways of getting to the T57 Heavy, in essence. Chaffee, T37, M41, T49. Uh, as opposed to the old way, M7, T21, T71, T69. Um, I think this is probably going to be a hell of a lot more fun going via the Chaffee, the T37 and the Bulldog than the M7, which is a desperately mediocre medium tank. The T21, which isn't bad. Um, the T71, which is a lot of fun. The T69, which is desperately mediocre unless you're using premium ammunition. Um, and then, of course, with the T54E1. So I can see these tanks being ridiculously popular. Uh, not just because they're good tanks, because they are good tanks, but also because they're a lot, a lot more fun than the alternative route to the T57 Heavy. How do I get back to the garage? Oh yes, I clicked the button that says garage. Duh. <laughs> oh, Jingles, you so crap. So, yeah, the T49, tier 8 light tank. I mean, I could go on at great length about, you know, why it's not as a fantastic machine compared to the others and blah blah and the, the, the fact of the matter remains it's got a howitzer that's it 152 millimeter howitzer kv2 that can do 72 kilometers per hour that is what this tank is and that is why people are going to be driving it um the stats largely irrelevant it's a kv2 that can do 72 kilometers per hour shut up and take my money <laughs> and yet like the kv2 it can be an intensely frustrating machine to drive. Now, first things first, the high explosive anti-tank credit bought ammunition with 152 millimeters of penetration and 700 average damage. A lot of people are going to be tempted into thinking, wow, credit bought heat ammo, I must use that. Don't do it. There you go. I just hit a leopard one. I could have done more damage than that if I'd fired high explosive. This high explosive anti-tank ammo, you're probably going to want to carry a couple of rounds of this stuff with you, but it's the kind of ammunition that you're only really going to use because this thing has such a slow reload. The kind of ammunition that you're only really going to use at certain stages of the game when you've already won, there's only two enemy tanks left, and you know they're the kind of tanks that you can penetrate with 152mm of penetration and they're on such low health that 700 damage is going to be a guaranteed kill. In almost every other circumstance, the tanks that you're shooting against are either going to be so badly armoured that you're going to want to fire high explosive to do maximum damage to them, or they're going to be so heavily armoured that the heat just isn't going to penetrate and is going to do no damage, and the high explosive is at least going to do something. High explosive, for example, fired at this AMX-50B, wouldn't have bounced. The heat does. Heat doesn't get normalisation for armour. High Explosive doesn't either, but it detonates on impact and would have at least done some damage to that AMX-50B. The heat is just a bad choice of default ammunition on this tank. Another reason to use High Explosive as your default ammunition loadout on this tank and not shoot heat at everything is because heat does not like spaced armour. That RU-251 only has 25mm of armour. A High Explosive round would have killed him. The heat just got eaten by his tracks. HE is your default ammunition load on this tank, not heat. Of course, even if you're using high explosive, it doesn't mean you're going to have a frustration-free existence because, well, you'd think that this tank was a dedicated, hardcore artillery killer, but artillery like the Conqueror gun carrier has 152mm of armour at the front, which means the high explosive isn't going to kill him, and even the high explosive anti-tank only has a 50-50 chance of penetrating. It really is a roller coaster ride when you're driving this tank, alternating between moments of woohoo when you come across Super Pershings and you manage to unload HE into the side. <laughs> and then, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, when you come across VK4502s and all you have is high explosive to shoot them with in the front for 88 damage. And I had one game in particular in the T49 that completely exemplifies the, exactly the sort of thing that I'm talking about. We're here on Sand River, it's a tier 10 game, and uh, we'll just this is the first shot that I fired in this match. 152mm howitzer, high explosive ammunition. Enemy T49 spotted. 
more than 600 meters away. He's moving. I am not fully aimed. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and that right there is why people want to drive the T49. The stats of the thing are completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. People are not driving the tank because of the stats. They're driving the tank because shots like that happen. But the thing is, RNG Jesus giveth and RNG Jesus taketh away. Because just a couple of minutes later, this happens. The RU251 has at the most 25mm of armour. He's got less than 600 health. My shell is going to do 910 average damage with a 3.6 meter splash radius. I don't even have to hit him to kill him. And I aim. And I fire. And all it does is blow his bloody tracks off. That was actually a direct hit. Let's have a look at it from another angle. And here's the close-up. And there he is. He's actually managed to straighten the tank out to an even flatter angle. And my shot goes right into the side. 910 average damage. And somehow he survives. So, what exactly are you saying here, Jingle? Derp guns are inconsistent. Tell me something I didn't already know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But th this is what the T-49 is like. One moment you're pulling off shots that you just can't believe happened, and then the next you're pulling off shots that you just can't believe happened. Both good and bad. Shots like this. There has never been a better opportunity to penetrate and do full damage to an STI. I had the top of his turret, the worst possible armor on the tank. What happens? Fully aimed, distance of 107 meters, shot goes low, hits his gun mantlet. <laughs> you better get used to it, because that's what driving the T-49 is like. But the thing is, none of this is gonna dissuade people from getting the T-49, because like when you're driving the KV-2, the moments of sheer keyboard breaking rage that you have when you're firing this kind of gun are easily outweighed by the moments of sheer pants on head hilarity <laughs> that you can have when you're driving a tank with this kind of gun this is somebody whose name is just a random collection of letters <laughs> i'm gonna call him dave um, his name is down there on display above his tank in the bottom left corner of the screen he sent me this replay and this is exactly the kind of game that you can have when you're driving the T-49. Uh, he's using exclusively the, in fact, he's using exclusively premium consumables and the premium high explosive ammunition with the five meter splash radius and nine millimeters more penetration, woohoo, than the uh, regular HE. He, that shot didn't even arrive in the same postcode as where he aimed it. <laughs> it's 0.6 accuracy. This is what the gun does. However, having said that, just watch what happens to his next shot. It's pretty much the same shot. Same range, same tiny target, same infinitesimal chance of hitting. There he is. It's an RU-251. He's got a flank shot. He's over 500 metres away. Look at this. He has to move. He isn't even fully aimed. And it just doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> It's almost as if aiming is irrelevant with this thing. Um, I mean, you saw the shot that I took on the STI. Fully aimed, 100 meters range, didn't go anywhere near where I aimed it. And yet, uh, the very next shot you fire, stuff like this happens. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why people are going to drive this tank. Uh, you know, the, the stats of the thing, 100% irrelevant. It's just howitzer on a tank that can do 72 kilometers per hour. Shut up and take my money. And that's as good a reason as any for getting a tank. But this game in particular just completely exemplifies the ridiculous inconsistency of the gun. Watch this shot on the T-54 lightweight. It's, it's a light tank. 910 average damage in the rear of a T-54 light. No, no, sorry, not even close. Not even in the same ballpark as 910 average damage. It should have one shot killed him and it just didn't. And yet, in the same game, he's pulling off the kind of shots that you wouldn't be able to do with a Panther and the L175mm gun. And here's another shot. So there's another T-49 there. He waits for him to stop. He fully aims. He pulls the trigger. And it just misses. 
you know, it's, it's things like this. This is the reason why the AMX 1390 has nothing to worry about, because it's a better tank. <laughs> Even if it's not as fast, even if it doesn't turn as quickly, even if the turret doesn't turn as quickly, it's it's just a better, more reliably consistent tank. A tank you can depend on to perform. Unlike this. 358 damage on a T-49? It only has 25mm of armour. It probably hit his gun and just splashed him with the 5.3m splash radius, but that is precisely why I don't think you're ever going to see people driving the T-49 competitively <laughs> because you just cannot rely on the thing to do what it needs to do when you need it to do it. He kills that T-49, you know, finally. <laughs> However, he's in trouble now because there's a T-54 and another T-49 on the top of that hill. And at best he's going to get one shot off against them. Watch this. I just have no words. Look at, look at this. <laughs> oh, you cannot be serious. Let's see that again. All right, here we go. This time in slow motion. So the T-54 comes in and, and plants one into him. He derps a shot back in the T-54, doesn't kill him. Then out of nowhere, a flying T-49. <laughs> Fires and misses wrecks himself the t-54 wrecks himself and look at look, look at how fast he's going backwards downhill he actually goes airborne at the bottom of the ramp oh, i need to see that again different angle this time okay here it comes t-54 comes in from the top t-54 fires hits him he survives he derps the t-54 back doesn't kill it then suddenly, out of nowhere, a flying T-49 appears, who fires and misses, blows himself up on the rock. The T-54 does the same. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how fast he's going backwards here. And just sort of casually... Yeah, I'm too cool for school. <laughs> oh, man. I I've got to get one of these tanks. I mean, it's, it's it's horribly inconsistent. It's nowhere near as good a tier 8 light tank as even an AMX 1390, but by God, this thing is fun. When it behaves itself, it can. It has the potential to be ridiculously amusing. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like loading up the KV-2 and taking that into a random battle. You don't expect to have the most epic game ever every time you drive the KV-2. For every game that you have like this, you're going to have 10 games that are just completely forgettable. And it's going to be like that with the T49 as well. And that's why tanks like the AMX 1390 are always going to be a preferred choice for serious players. Look at the 1390 in this match. I mean, Dave and the T49 might have had all the fun, but the 1390 got all the kills. And I do hear things like this a lot from French light tank drivers who are up in arms about all these new tanks that are coming out, the new light tanks that are coming out in patch 9.3, and they're saying, well, are we just irrelevant now? You know, what about us? Well, no, you're not. The 1390 is a better, more consistent tier 8 light tank than the T49. Oh, jingles, but no, no, it is. It, it just is. You cannot rely on the T49 with that howitzer to do what it needs to do every time it needs to do it. it, it it's like... It's like playing a lottery with that gun. It's fun when it works, but it doesn't always work. Of course, like the KV-2, when it does work, you forget all about the previous 10 matches when it didn't work, because when it does work, it is absolutely hilarious. So, summing up the T-49, um, you know there's all kinds of questions that people expect me to answer when I do one of these previews or reviews you know what, what's the power to weight ratio like how fast is it uh, how, how quickly does it turn what's the gun depression like uh, what's the you know the the signal range the view range and this and that and that none of that matters <laughs> none of that matters in the case of this tank because it's a kv2 that can do 72 kilometers per hour that is the only important thing that you need to know about the T-49, and that is what sells this tank. For, for the majority of people, watching this preview and, and having watched the replays, it's just going to be a case of 152mm howitzer on a tier 8 light tank, shut up and take my money. And, and, that, and that's a perfectly, perfectly acceptable response, because it is fun. 
um, it can be frustrating. But it's one of those machines, like the KV-2. Nobody ever has a mediocre game in the KV-2. It's either a complete disaster or it's absolutely hilarious. And the T-49 is the same. And that is a good enough reason for getting the tank. As always, folks, um, take care on that battlefield. And I'll catch you next time.